Bună dimineața, stimați reprezentanții mass media. Good morning, dear representatives of mass media. Our apologies for the delay, which was caused by the technical deficiencies. Lack of internet, to be more precise. My name is Nikolai Panfil. I am a program director at Promolex Association, head of observation mission at Promolex for the election of 11th July 2021. Today we will present the fifth monitoring report of the observation mission, which covers uh, the last two weeks of campaign. In this regard, I would like to mention traditionally the um, contribution and support of our partners, of the donors that are supporting the activity of the observation mission. It is the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, Netherlands Embassy Office in Chisinau, Council of Europe, and partially Soros Foundation Moldova on the component of hate speech monitoring during the electoral campaign. This report, as I've said already, covers the last two weeks and uh, we know, all of us, that in two days we will have the election day, so from the very beginning I would like to invite the media outlets as well as the whole society to watch on the elections day the press conferences and the press releases that will be distributed by Promolex Association. So we'd like to inform you that we will have two press conferences on the elections day at 9.30 a.m. and the second one at 2.30 p.m. Afterwards, uh, before and after closing of the polling stations, we'll issue two press releases without organizing press conferences. So the first one will be at 7.30 p.m. and at uh, 10.30 PM, uh, we will release uh, two press releases. So we invite you to monitor how the election day will unfold and the um, findings that we'll have in that regard. And on the next day, after the election day at 10.30 a.m., we'll have a press conference focused on the results of quick vote counting, and we will also make the totals of the election day. Having said that, I would like to uh, begin presenting the fifth report. Traditionally, we start with the legal framework. And I'd like to mention several decisions, three uh, decisions to be more specific, three inadmissibility decisions for the non-constitutionality exceptions issued by the Constitutional Court during the monitoring period. The court did not review on the merits the notifications, but it is important to underline several aspects that the Constitutional Court drew the attention to with regards to the notifications reviewed. So the court explained that the preferential treatment of women introduced by Article 86, Paragraph 2 of the Electoral Code is not discriminatory. We remind that uh, an electoral um, contender, better said, potential electoral can candidate which collected uh, signatures uh, appealed this, uh, reaching up to the Constitutional Court with the idea that uh, that uh, men are somehow discriminated uh, compared to women during the signature collection procedure and uh, the court established the what I've mentioned earlier. The assumption that persons living on the left bank of the Nisto River are usually subjected to manipulations is biased. That's, another, that's related to another notification filed with the Constitutional Court. And the third one, the court said that the establishment of polling stations by CEC on a territory that is not actually controlled by authorities is not only unlawful but also non-constitutional. So we remember the three polling stations that initially were set up on the territory that are not controlled by the constitutional authorities. Also, in the chapter on legal framework in the report, we also address the accessibility of electoral uh, lists. And here, uh, given the public discussions, whether 
it is lawful to publish the electoral rolls. So it is lawful publishing the electoral rolls that contain the voters' first and last names is a needed measure proportional with the pursued public interest of ensuring transparency and accuracy of electoral rolls. International standards state that publishing the electoral rolls and provision of a procedure for voters to correct the errors are two criteria that are needed in order to guarantee the accuracy of electoral rolls. Regarding the activity of electoral bodies, during the observation period, CEC met in seven meetings, of which three were ordinary and four extraordinary, in a mixed format. Until 7th of July, CEC has accredited 2,442 observers, of which 1,800 national observers and 642 international observers. It's important to note that compared with the presidential elections of 2020, the number of observers has increased overall by 249 people. Regarding Promolex observers, I would like to underline that we have accredited 1,186 observers, accounting for 66% of all national observers. During the reporting period, uh, Promolex also monitored the procedure of uh, amending the list of candidates, which took place uh, in the case of at least 11 uh, contenders. These amendments were made in line with the law. Nevertheless, we stated in the report, and we also presented the case of rejecting the request to amend the list of candidates by... Um, uh, Noi political party regarding the inclusion of Christian Rizia on the grounds that uh, he does not have the citizenship of the Republic of Moldova. At the same time, I would like to draw your attention to a very important issue that was noticed uh, during the uh, electoral debates uh, on TV. Uh, the Central Electoral Commission underscored that the participation in the electoral campaign of a foreign citizen puts at risk the registration of that party for the electoral run, and it drew the attention in this regard to, in, in its decision, CSC drew the attention to this issue. In order to ensure proper condition for the smooth organization and contact of elections, on 27th of June, CSC sent to the National Anti-Corruption Center, Security and Intelligence Service, Minister of uh, Interiors, General Prosecution Office, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and European Integration, and ANTAM, National Agency for Road Transportation, a letter requesting their proposal regarding their duties in the context of the actions to be conducted in order to fight voter rigging and uh, organized transportation of voters. We have to mention that most of the opinions received from those institutions were, uh, however, negative. Afterwards, on 30th of June, CEC also sent to the General Police Inspectorate, Minister of Interiors and the General Prosecution Office a letter asking for their opinions regarding the notification of political party Dignity and Truth Platform and Pass Party asking for a decision uh, that would regulate the organized transportation of voters. In this regard, I will present the response of one institution only, General Police Inspectorate, which stated that it did not uh, support uh, the draft uh, a decision regarding some aspects uh, with regards to the participation in the elections of voters domiciled on the left bank of the Nistro River. In such a way, uh, the General Police Inspectorate um, uh, declined any of its duties on the election day to supervise and to control what would happen uh, with regards to organized um, transportation of voters. In this context, I would like to mention that on the 7th of July, four days before the election, CEC included on the agenda the issue 
of the draft decision on the organized transportation of voters to the polling stations. But this decision was not passed because of insufficient votes being supported only by four out of the seven members present at the meeting. In this regard, I would like to draw the attention to the fact that Civic Coalition for Free and Fair Elections informed about this problem back in back at the beginning of the electoral campaign and asked for a decision to be adopted by the Central Electoral Commission in order to make sure that such phenomena are prevented uh, for the elections of 11th of July. In spite of the efforts and requests, repeated requests made by the coalition as well as by Promolex, we find that CSC failed to pass such a decision which uh, risks to endanger the um, efficient organization of the elections in these polling stations and uh, uh, in such a way it will not be possible to prevent uh, cases of uh, organized transportation of voters, a phenomenon which uh, was present at the previous elections and most probably we can expect to see it at uh, current elections as well. Regarding the ballot papers, I would mention that um, CEC already printed the ballot papers, so for 145 polling stations abroad, 5,000 ballot papers were printed for each of them. Uh, five smaller uh, polling stations are an exception where fewer voters will uh, vote. Regarding the activity of electoral bureaus set up abroad, Promolex found that on uh, uh, 7th of July 2021, at least uh, half of them had an even uh, number of members, which is a violation of the law. Here, I would like to underline that CEC can uh, appoint more members from the Register of Electoral Officials, and we um, urge um, the Electoral Commission to make sure that these um, bureaus have enough members, because we know very well that the voting process in diaspora is much more complicated. They are citizens. Uh, for each citizen, they have to fill in manually the voter rolls and they need more time to do so. Also, in this context, or regarding the lower electoral bodies, we have stated in the report that district electoral councils accredited at least 2,141 observers from eight contenders, which is by 60% lower compared to the 2020 presidential elections. Most of the observers, according to our findings, were accredited by Shore Party, 38%, Electoral Bloc of Communists and Socialists, 27%, Electoral Bloc Renato Usadi, 13%, and Actions and Solidarity Party, 12%. So these are observers accredited uh, at uh, district electoral councils. During the reference period, Promolex observers visited 1,691 electoral uh, polling stations, uh, sorry, uh, electoral bureaus, of which only 1,347, 80% were open during the working hours. Observers also found that uh, lower electoral bodies do not comply with anti-epidemic measures. So um, the body temperature of visitors is taken only in 76% of uh, district electoral um, councils and only at 27% of precinct electoral bureaus. Regarding the electoral um, uh, lists, um, they were sent with deficiency out of 1,691 electoral polling stations visited, only 1,276, meaning 75 percent, have had received electoral uh, rolls at the moment of um, visit. 80 percent, uh, meaning 1,019 polling stations, the observers had access to electoral um, rolls. Or, in other words, in 20 percent of polling stations, we did not have access to polling uh, stations. Out of all 1,000 
19 polling stations where we had access to lists, we found some errors in 12% presence of deceased people on the list, incorrect assigning of voters to another polling station in 5% of the polling stations, and errors with addresses in 2% of the polling stations. Regarding the electoral litigations, during the reference period, uh, CSC received a complaint filed by the National Unity Party against Shore Political Party. In case of this uh, complaint, as well as in case of another, filed by Pachi against Actions and Solidarity Party filed on 18th of June, the examination period set by law was um, extended because according to Article 73 of the Electoral Code, all of the electoral um, uh, complaints should be settled no later than uh, on the election day. Only two of the four notification filed on uh, June the 2nd, 2021 were uh, reviewed. Within 31 days, CEC sent letter to PAS party and president of the Republic of Moldova drawing their attention to the need to comply with the legal provisions regarding the participation on equal foods of electoral contenders in the electoral campaign and the prohibition to use for electoral advertising purpose of the state institution or public authority. So with regards to two complaints that were sent for review and settled according to the competence to the Council for Discrimination Prevention and Elimination and Ensuring Equality, CEC received two consultative opinions. Promolex um, uh, appreciates positively the practice of sending uh, alleged discriminations to the Council for Discrimination Prevention and Elimination and Ensuring Equality and encourages the institution to continue this practice further on. The Court of Appeals received at least six complaints against uh, CEC actions and decisions in the prior period. Three are about uh, establishment of polling stations abroad, two are about registration of failure to register electoral contenders, and one regarding the registration of electoral symbol. At the same time, on 23rd, between 23rd June and 7 July, the Court of Appeals issued uh, solutions with regards to seven complaints. However, with regards to the complaint regarding opening of polling stations for voters from the left bank of the Nistor River, Kishino Court of Appeals issued a decision outside of the current reporting period on 8th of July 2021 only, only three days before the election day. Though the complaint was filed for uh, merit examination on 18th of June 2021, the decision of the Court of Appeals annulled partially the annex to the CEC decision number 4965 of June the 5th and the CEC decision 4999 with regards to exceeding the number of 12 polling stations. We mentioned that the decision of the Court of Appeals can be appealed at the Supreme Court of Justice. However, we have to underline the fact that it is regrettable that uh, such a decision was passed so late and so close to the election day because, as you know already, the polling stations have been already set up and um, it will be quite difficult for the electoral bodies to resolve this legal issue so that to know clearly how many polling stations should be functional on the election day for voters from the Transnistrian region. In this context, I would like to remind uh, oh, what we have communicated in the previous press conference. It is about the fact that, uh, according to some analysis uh, made by Promolex Association during the post um, electoral period uh, after the presidential elections of 2020. So we reviewed this issue, we have analyzed, and we have found that uh, for the polling stations from the Transnistrian region, for the voters from the Transnistrian region, in our opinion, it would have been enough to have 28 polling stations. The decision of the electoral body was to set up initially 43 polling stations, then this number decreased down to 41, and now we see the decision of the Courts of Appeal. So we are still to see what will be the final decision, if this deci decision is appealed at the Supreme Court of Justice. But I would like 
to repeat one more time that this is worrying that such a decision is taken so late. During the reference period, the Supreme Court of Justice received at least five uh, appeals and one request to solve a conflict of competence. The solutions were the following, two decisions to reject uh, the appeal and uphold the decision of the Court of Appeals of Chisinau, three of inadmissibility, one um, resolution to reject the um, request to solve uh, the conflict of competences. And now I would like to say something about the activity of the local public authorities with regards to the preparation for elections. Here I would like to underline that until 8th of July 2021, the government failed to ensure full funding for the organization and conduct of elections. This can affect the quality of the procedures on the elections day because the amount of 22 million 468 thousand lay was intended for the remuneration of electoral officials. Unfortunately, as you know already, on the meeting of 7th of July, the government failed to approve the decision on the grounds uh, of lacking um, uh, a quorum. We have all of us, uh, we have monitored, we have watched this uh, meeting and in our opinion the failure to come up to the government meeting can be regarded as a form of boycott uh, especially uh, that we know that previously some government meetings were done online and also uh, some media outlets showed that some ministers were present on that very day and on the following day in spite of the fact that they have invoked uh, uh, being sick so they participated in other public events so uh, it is worrying that uh, uh, this could be a boycott uh, by the government in order not to provide enough resources for the organization of elections and in such a way to create uh, chaos or uncertainty with regards to the organization of the elections. And this, of course, could impact not only the organization of elections, but also the whole environment during the campaign and um, even more than uh, before, because we are close to the election day and these uncertainties that have not been solved can create uh, can generate uh, or trigger other problems. Until the 7th of July 2021, Promolex observers have visited 812 level 1 administrative territorial units regarding the extent to which they have fulfilled their duties related to election organization, 719 mayoralities, meaning 89% of the visited one, passed decision on uh, venues for electoral posts, and 704 uh, mayoralities, 87%, passed decision on venues to meet with voters. Observers also found that uh, at least 329 mayoralties, 40 percent, received uh, late uh, the um, uh, electoral rolls out of the all 812 visited. Regarding the role and involvement of the central and local public authorities, I would like to mention that the Minister of Health, Labor and Social Protection, together with public health agency and with the support of the World Health Organization, launched on 7th of July the national campaign with the motto after voting get your vaccine. The health authorities urge all of the citizens after exercising their right to vote to get a vaccine against COVID-19. Promolex also encourages vaccination. This uh, will be done between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. The only thing that we would like to draw the attention to is uh, to make sure that the vaccination procedures do not affect the electoral process. We know that in some localities, especially in smaller villages, the premises uh, that are allocated for the voting um, procedure or for other um, uh, events uh, involving uh, a bigger number of citizens are limited. So 
if um, it will be the case to have both processes in the same building, both the voting and the vaccination processes, we kindly ask the authorities to be careful and to make sure that the voting process is not affected, because we know that in the vicinity of the polling station only um, uh, people, only voters who came to vote can be present and it's not allowed to have a group of people staying there without a clear purpose. So it is prohibited to have uh, groups of people in the vicinity of polling stations if this uh, impacts negatively the activity of electoral uh, bodies. Regarding the electoral contenders, between 22nd June and 6th July, the activism of um, contenders has increased continuously. We have found by 25 more events and activities conducted during this period in the last two weeks, I mean, out of all 1,456 activities observed, most of them were carried out by Action and Solidarity Party, 27%, Electoral Bloc of Communists and Socialists, 15%, Electoral Bloc Renato Usati, 12%. The most popular activities are the distribution of electoral materials, 52%, and meetings with voters, 30 percent. Abroad also we have noticed uh, more, active, uh, more activity um, of the electoral contenders uh, uh, who organized 31 meetings with voters face-to-face, uh, -face, three times more compared to the previous period. Of them, 13 activity, meaning 42 percent, were conducted by PAS, 29 percent by National Unity Party, Dignity and Truth Platform 19% and 10% Democracy at Home Party. Most of these activities, 75%, took place in Italy. In one case, three candidates on the list of Pace Party, including the president of the party, invoked uh, um, hindering the access to meet with voters with diaspora in St. Petersburg. Nevertheless, we have included in the report uh, the uh, response of the Minister of External Affairs and European Integration, which found purposeful non-compliance with the entry rules uh, on the territory of the uh, Russian Federation by one of the three candidates uh, from the Pachi Party. Another thing to mention is the initiative of uh, the so-called initiative Gift for Moldova to give free vouchers worth 1,000 rubles for Moldovan citizens who will come up to vote on uh, the 11th of July. So it's a project launched on 15th of March 2020 with a declared purpose to help Moldovan citizens in the Russian Federation. This project is promoted by Mikhail Kornia, director of uh, Dar Pentru Moldova or Gift for Moldova. Moldova project. It is interesting that a person with the same first and last names, Mikhail Kornia, was appointed by CEC as member of the Electoral Bureau of Polling Station number 241 in the Russian Federation located in Moscow region, Mutishi town. In this context, we'd like to underline that it would be good for CEC to investigate into this case to make sure whether this is the same person and to see if uh, there aren't any uh, preconditions to find an eventual uh, interference of a member of the Electoral Bureau in activities that have uh, uh, elements of electoral campaigning. Unfortunately, we found that no meetings were reported in the Transnistrian region, so citizens from that uh, region are still isolated and less informed than uh, people living on the rest of the territory of the country. Also, observers have reported during the electoral campaign, uh, during the uh, last two weeks, at least 67 cases that can be regarded as use of administrative resources for electoral promotion, of which 18% by Democratic Party, 13 cases electoral bloc of communists and socialists, 11 cases by uh, PASS and Dignity and Truth platform each, 9 cases electoral bloc Renato Usati and 5 cases by Shore Party. 
regarding the types of administrative resources. So it is about organizing electoral meetings in state institutions during the working hours, 29 cases, taking credits for works and services made from public money, 22 cases, and involving employees uh, from the public sector in uh, campaigning activities, 16 cases. Our observers also reported at least one case that can be regarded as offering gifts with electoral connotation involving Pacha party. It is about the case from Recha village, Rishkan district, where on June 22nd a well was uh, qualified and opened by representatives of uh, Pacha representatives. And uh, on the wall and uh, of this well, uh, the acronym of the, that party, Pachi, was engraved. In three days, the engraved inscription was removed by non-identified persons. Also, at least seven cases were reported, three for Paz, three for Bloc of Communist and uh, Socialist, and one case for Electoral Bloc Renato Usati of using uh, uh, images and symbols of the Republic of Moldova and other states. Also, at least 2,685 cases of um, electoral advertising by 19 electoral contenders were found, most of them 29% uh, by PAS, Bloc of Communist and Socialist 16% and Renato Sati Electoral Bloc 12%. Promolex also found at least four cases of using electoral advertising uh, without complying with the requirements for printed um, electoral materials, meaning uh, the need to indicate the printing house, number of issues printed, and so on. Also, we have found at least three cases that can be regarded as use of violence during the electoral campaign. All of these cases involved uh, our and uh, electoral bloc of communists and socialists. In short, uh, the first case was about, uh, that took place on the 23rd of June. It involves uh, our party uh, that had a repeated attempt to travel by its bus to the Transnistrian region. Like in the case of 21st of June, their access was obstructed again by the military forces of the Transnistrian regime. Nevertheless, given our refusal to give up on their attempt to travel to Transnistria, they were blocked in the crossing point until the next day. Another case occurred on the 4th of July 2021 when the electoral bloc of communist and socialists organized a march with preliminary information of the authorities. Representatives of our tried to block that march and they created a corridor uh, out of its members to block uh, Stefan Chalmari main street in Chisinau. Uh, during that uh, uh, situation, uh, the candidate of our Dorin Kirtak uh, tried to reach uh, the leader of the communist and socialist, but uh, his attempt was uh, prevented uh, by representatives of law enforcement bodies. During that fight, at least one case of using uh, tear gas after one representative of law enforcement bodies was hit by one representative of our. Also, uh, we have seen how one representative of our attacked a representative of law enforcement bodies, bringing him down to earth. An investigation was started on that case, so the police is investigating this case. And the last case of violence uh, during the electoral campaign took place on 7th of July, when representatives of our party traveled to the office of, uh, uh, of the Socialist Party with a declared purpose to invite uh, uh, Igor Dodon to electoral debate. In order to prevent access into the office, the socialists made uh, a, a, a corridor uh, out of its members. Uh, and uh, Dorin Kertuak, a representative of our party, was hit by Alexandru Odintsov, representative of the socialists. Unfortunately, we have to say that such fights uh, uh, do not 
do good for the electoral campaign. Any form of uh, violence, aggressive behavior, intimidation is condemned. And uh, we hope very much that such things will not be repeated uh, during the electoral campaign further on. Regarding the funding of the campaign, Promolex analyzed the financial reporting of electoral contenders. And we also made some uh, estimations regarding their expenses. I have to underline that we refer to the period between 21st of May, 2nd of July, when we speak about the funding of the electoral com contenders, which covers the six weeks of campaigning the whole period. The financial reports for the fifth and sixth uh, campaign week were submitted by 19 contenders out of the 23 registered. Regarding the accuracy of financial reports, we found a low quality level of the information reported. And now I would like to mention some of the main findings with regards to the financial report submitted to CEC. First, I would like to say that 111, uh, sorry, 118 donors were found who donated more than their revenue or did not have any income at all in the past three years. Uh, together, an impressive amount was raised, 1 million lei which raises lots of uh, question marks. Also, we have found that two electoral uh, contenders reported uh, income from three uh, legal entities that previously had um, uh, public procurement contracts uh, concluded. It is about dignity and truth platform involving 55,000 lei from Lactis and Grisan companies. Party for developing and strengthening Moldova, 120,000 lei donated by Companado and land market companies. I would like to say that this money was returned by electoral contenders to donors as prescribed by the law. Use of uh, revenue from the electoral fund in violation of Article 41, Paragraph 2, Letter I of the Electoral Code is a finding stated in the report. It is about four contenders that violated it. Dignity and Truth Platform, PASS, uh, Democracy at Home Party and Pacha Party. CEC found that they submitted with a delay uh, the reports on the um, uh, money placed on the electoral fund account. Also regarding the funding of the electoral campaign, we found that during the reference period 19 electoral contenders declared a total revenue of 33 million 579,923 lei, of which 36% were declared by electoral bloc Renato Usati, 18% by PAS party, and 12% by communist and socialist electoral bloc and short political party each. So we found that four electoral contenders reported 78% of uh, revenue, and the other and the other 15 electoral contenders reported only 22% of total revenue. Regarding the sources of revenue of contenders, they were formed from donations of individuals, 58%, transfers from the current account of the political parties, 30%, donations of legal entities, 6%, and in-kind donations, also 6%. According to our findings, uh, the ceilings uh, for donations have not been exceeded. Regarding the expenses of electoral contenders, the total value is 30,459,125 lei, of which 37 were reported by electoral bloc Renato Osati, 18% by uh, PAS party, 13% by Shore party, and 12% by electoral bloc of communists and socialists. So again, we find that 80% of all expenses were made by four electoral contenders and the other 20% by the remaining contenders. The main purposes for, of expenses are for electoral advertising 64% and for promotional materials used for electoral purposes 24% of expenses. The electoral activities were estimated for each contended from the date when it registered and until the 2nd of July. I underline this. And also, 
For all six weeks of electoral campaign, Promolex estimated unreported expenses of at least 10,859,900 lei, of which 30% by electoral bloc of communists and socialists, 21% by Shore political party, 12% by Democratic Party, and 9% by Action and Solidarity Party. Most of the expenses that were not reported were used for promotional materials, 41% followed by expenses for detachment or secondment of staff, 15%, and expenses for the campaigning offices, 14%. So these are our findings regarding the funding of electoral campaigns. And the last uh, uh, section in the report focuses on hate speech and incitement to discrimination. Between 21st of June and 5th of July, Promolex identified at least 43 cases of hate speech and instigation to discrimination, which is by 43% more compared to the previous monitoring period. During this period, during the reporting period, at least 25% of cases of hate speech or other non-tolerant expressions were generated by 11 candidates included on the list of eight electoral contenders. And here we speak about our six cases, Democracy at Home political party, six cases cases, Electoral Bloc Renato Sate, four cases, Working People's Party, three cases, uh, Electoral Bloc Communist of Socialists, three cases, Pache, Dignity and Truth Platform and National Unity Party, one case each. One case uh, um, involved a representative of political party Noi. On the other hand, in at least 10 cases of hate speech and incitement to discrimination, targeted two candidates from the list of uh, electoral bloc of communists and socialists. It's about Igor Dodon in seven cases and Vladimir Voronin in three cases. The other cases affected the supporters of the bloc of communist and uh, socialist, part of law and justice, president of the Republic of Moldova and other politicians. So these are our findings uh, stated in the fifth report. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, please ask them. So um, we are still, it is still worrying that uh, we have a dramatic increase even more than during the presidential elections of the case of using administrative resources for the electoral campaign. Also, as I've mentioned uh, about the significant increase in the number of uh, cases of hate speech used during the campaign, we should also uh, underline the aggressive, the violent behavior uh, during the electoral campaign, especially during the last two weeks. This could be seen with the naked eye. And of course, I would also refer to more global issues, such as the fact that we still do not have certainty with regards to how the costs for the organization of the electoral campaign will be fully funded. Also, we have uh, questions regarding how the elections for the citizens from the Transnistrian region will be organized with reference to yesterday's decision issued by the Court of Appeals. So I think uh, this should be underlined out of the major problems related to the electoral campaign. So let's see what will happen on Sunday. I hope very much we'll have a calm day uh, when uh, citizens will be able to freely exercise their right to vote and all litigations, including the legal ones, will be solved uh, before Sunday so that we have clarity for all stakeholders what will happen on Sunday at the polling stations. Thank you. And we'll be waiting for you on Sunday at 9.30 a.m and 2.30 p.m. for press conferences and uh, for the other events happening later 
I remind that we will have press releases issued to media outlets at 7.30 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. after the polling stations close. Thank you very much for your attention. See you on Sunday at the campaign office of Promolex mission.